Hey guys, it's Kev here, KevWestBeats.com. Today, um, I wanted to talk about some features that I'd like to see in future machine updates. Um, people have been telling me, you know, I've been giving Reason a little bit of a bashing. I'm not trying to beat up on Reason. I'm just expressing, you know, some of my frustrations and some of my opinions with Reason. And with my last video that I released um, about rack extensions, I actually felt like I was kind of positive. Um, I do like the rack extension format. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, but, you know, I want to, I wish it was just more open-ended, I guess. Um, but anyway, this video is about Machine, and some of my frustrations about Machine, it's single core. That's extremely frustrating for me because when I open up some of my more heavy-duty plugins, like I'll give you guys an example, I'm going to open up Monarch. Let me see, get Monarch going. But it eats up the CPU really fast, and it really, like, just brings machine to its knees, and it can do so very, very quickly. So I'm going to open up Monarch on one channel, and I can't mix in machine at all, and part large part because it is single core. So I'm going to open up F-Expansions Bloom. Now these are all kind of CPU-heavy devices. If you look at the little white meter right here. This is my actual CPU meter. My pointer's on it. It's right next to the volume slider on the left of it. That's a CPU meter. I've only opened two modules on one track and I'm already seeing a significant difference in CPU usage. I'm going to go to a third module now and like I said, I've only done a synth and a delay. Then let me see here. And then I'll open up say a British channel. IK. And look how, and the British channel isn't even that CPU heavy. But look, see, it's already going into the red. I haven't even played anything. I just opened these three modules. And it's up on the machine. Um, if I go into pad mode, you see, I'm already getting audio drop. I believe a lot of that has to do, it can't handle the CPU that it's asking for. It's, my computer's Core i7, um, you know, 2.2 gigahertz. No, so I don't. I don't have a bad computer. I don't have a low power by any means. Two point two gets a little on the slow. It should be fine for audio production. Um, and I mean, even if I open up something like Zeta, like I'll open up Zeta two. You know, you still see the significant bounce in CPU versus if I were to cut off some of these channels. Like I'll cut off Zeta. You see, it goes down a little bit. And I mean. Machine is actually very, very CPU if you just use samples. Take out Bloom. You see it, it's starting to slowly but surely come down. And down to nothing. <clears throat> Face open Bloom. Yeah. You still see it a little bit, but not as much. But the thing is, if it was multi-core I don't think we'd have these many problems it, I wouldn't have that much problem with it because it's hard for me to just do one track of sounds in machine standalone I can open all these same things in Ableton which is also known for being CPU heavy and not have as many problems um, but I do love machine as a drum machine as a sampler um, it's just when dealing with plugins and effects I really really feel it needs multi-core to be um, to be more useful as a standalone deal so that's why I use it mostly as a plug-in these days. Um, number two, I, I want to see a mixer page. Like, this is something else that kind of frustrates me a little bit. I'm going to open up another instrument, open up Absinthe, just so I can go to the mixer page and out. Um, well, or it's just the lack thereof of a mixer page. The machine doesn't have one. Like, you see, this is the mixer page. And you can do it per pad, you can do it per group. And basically you have a volume slider for your main volume on that channel and then you have two auxiliary volumes and you can route those to wherever they need to go. You know, and you can also run the output to your group or one of 16 outputs. Which those outputs are actually very useful, the levels are very useful when you need them. Um, especially because you know you do still want to be able to level things out, but I can't 
very well mixed with this with this thing. It's just imp almost impossible. I hear people saying, you know, yeah, they do all their production in it. My question is, how the hell are you mixing with it? Like, I'll open, like, I'll use a delay. I'll use an um, instrument, and then you know, I'll do EQ and compression, and I'm out of slots. You know, I could put the delay on an auxiliary group, maybe. No, that would even save me some some, um, some space. But even then, I'm worried about CPU. So I don't see how people are mixing with machine. It seems very difficult um, versus using a more traditional open in the DAW. Um, my third feature, and I haven't realized this until, until recently when I got machine, a lot of my followers on YouTube are people who use machine and reason together, kind of. They have the rewire VST and they run it in 32-bit mode, but why doesn't machine just have rewire? It just makes so much sense. I I, I would honestly prefer if I could just use machine inside of Reason itself, but at the same time, I think a lot of people use um, Reason for its synth capabilities, and they like arranging and doing all all that and everything else in machine. So rewire and machine just makes a lot of sense. So I could use Reason and it would just pop up like any VST would in this list. That's how most um, DAWs, for those of you that don't use Reason, that's how most of the DAWs handle rewire. You know, it, you would just see your plugins, it pop in, boom, right under um, Reactor, you just see Reason. And it would just show up like any other plugin, op um, then just open it up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't even really send MIDI out from here to Reason. I tried that. Um, I can't take the MIDI inputs um, to, from Reason to Machine. I've heard of people on Mac being able to get it done. I'm on PC. I'm on Windows 8. Um, and I've heard of people being able to get it done that way. But that's just... It sounds more difficult than I think it should be. I think it should just work at the push, push of a button um, without any extra work because I paid for a product that should just work. Um, but you know, those are just a few of my suggestions. Um, I do love Machine. I love the sounds for it. I love it as a drum machine by itself, um, as a great NPC alternative. You know, especially for somebody who wants a physical hardware controller or who wants some physical hardware but they want the power of their computer. I think Machine is excellent for that. Um, it's not an NPC, but I don't think that's really the point. It's more of an NPC alternative. Um, I still have my 2000. My NPC 2000 actually is broken, and it's in my garage. But um, so I do have experience with NPCs. I have, like I said, I have a 2000 non XL, and <clears throat> with this guy, no, they're similar, but they're very different too. Um, <clears throat> so let me try to think if there's anything else that I wanted to see there. That's basically it. Multi core audio tracks, a mixer page, and rewire. Oh, I don't remember if I talked about, um, yeah, I did talk about the mixer page. So yeah, so that's everything that I want to see in Machine. What would you guys like to see? You know, if it's in 2.0 or 1.9, I hear they, you know, they kind of have to do a little bit of a rewrite in order to make a multi-core, um, so it might have to wait till 2.0, which also makes me think, why didn't they just make a multi-core from the beginning? That's whatever. Um, what do you guys think about Machine? What would you guys like to see added to it? Um, to make it better for you. Um, I'm not necessarily on the wavelength of making it a DAW. Um, I don't think machine is a DAW. I think it's an excellent drum machine. Um, I think of it more like I said, like I would think of an MPC SP1200, um, MV8000, um, SP, uh, ASR10, something like that. Also, I'd, I would have loved to have seen an ASR10 mode on here. Because um, for those of you that don't know, um, let me pull up the sampler real quick. You go into the sampler, this engine mode right here, right under where you see Bloom at, you can actually go into several different modes, um, sound modes. So you have your vintage mode with the SP1200 and the MPC60. Obviously, I think for legal reasons, they said MP60 and SP12 and um, S1200. We know what those are. And then you can even um, emulate their filters. You have the low pass filter the low mid, the high mid, and the high pass filter. And they actually did a really good job with these. These things sound great. I use the MPC emulation often. I really like the SP1200 with the low mid filter on there too. So I would have loved to see an ASR10 on there, or maybe even just seen some more classic modules on there. Um, but I do love what we have so far. Anyway, again, tell me what you guys think. I'm rambling. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and check out kevwestbeats.com.